Uh, if you had to ask me after the game, we played against England. Yeah, we were probably at that time looking at all the options. And uh, the key thing for us as a coaching staff, we had to select the best possible 23 players to be able to perform against uh, New Zealand. You know, they've got uh, very, very spe special players in their team with a lot of X Factor, and we know they want to keep the ball in play. You know, so I think if you look at the balance, I'm talking about now with our forwards, you know, to be able to have seven forwards that will probably be fresh come second half, you know. Uh, I think that was one of our key focus points to be able to select the 7-1, you know, and uh, we have done it before. It worked for us once it, against Ireland when we when we lost to Ireland in our group stages, we also went for 7-1, and I feel like in that game, we really, really performed well. We were just unfortunate we didn't convert into points, you know, so I think when you look at the history, it has worked for us before, so that's why uh, against the All Blacks, it's a key thing that you have to have fresh forwards on the field because we know the challenges that we're going to face. It's going to be ball in play. Morning, Coach. Um, it's the last game for Coach Nienaber, for Coach Jones. Maybe just a couple of words on them. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a very, very special moment, you know, to be able to represent your country, you know, and uh, being in the World Cup final, we know it doesn't get bigger than this, you know. And uh, those two gentlemen, Jacques and Felix, myself and Jacques, we started working with him in 2016 at the Springbok team, and I know the gentleman is really, really uh, helped the team to be where it is at the moment, you know. Uh, we know how much pride he's got with his defense, and and uh, I think as a team, we are in a good space. All credit must also go to those two gentlemen. Felix Jones, I will never forget the day we first met him when we arrived in Japan, you know. And the gentleman never looked back, you know, and he's always uh, in a good spirit, always trying to help everyone around the team. You know, I've learned a lot from both of them, you know, and uh, uh, I wish them nothing but the best in their future, you know, and uh, hopefully tomorrow. I, don't, I know we don't, want, we don't want to be too emotional about the game, you know, because it's just bigger than us. You know, uh, there's plus minus 60 million people in South Africa that are looking up at this moment, you know, and for, for us to be able to say, you know what, uh, we're at least contributing in our country to make it a better place, you know, uh, uh, we are really, really in a, a privileged and a blessed position where we are as a team, and I wish those two gentlemen nothing but the best in their future, and for sure, we will meet them again. Coach Stoker, just uh, some words on Dwayne Famele. <laughs> what a legend. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing, I'm probably, I'm not that old to Dwayne, you know, uh, a very, very special guy, you know, uh, a lot of sacrifice he has made in his, in his in his career, you know, being away from the family. A gentleman who's got young kids, you know, a young family, and the sacrifice that he has done for, for this country, you know, and uh, it's a very, very special moment, I know, for him, but I know one thing for sure. If you had to ask Dwayne currently now, if he's, 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 is, it, is it about him or is it about what he represents, which is the nation, you know, he will tell you sure that he will put his body on the line for the nation. So it's a very, very special moment also for him. And uh, hopefully we can uh, give him a proper, proper send off. And I know it's going to be a tough game, you know, more especially if you look at the history between the two teams. You know, the last time we played a final against them was in 1995. And a lot of us that are involved in the team now, we fell in love with the game because of that game. You know, uh, if you go back in 1995, what that team has done for the country, you know. They've really changed the image of the game in South Africa. Everyone fell in love with the game. And uh, and that's where some of us, as youngsters, we've benefited from that moment, you know. We fell in love with the game because of the special memories that were created by those guys, Joel and Stransky. And once again, for Dwayne, uh, I think the gentleman, he, probably, he surely left the, 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 the jersey. He's gonna leave the jersey in a better place. That's one thing I like about him. He has really, really put, Dignity in that jersey, number eight jersey. So I wish him nothing but the best, also. Coach Stoker, you mentioned uh, while the seven month bench work against Ireland. Um, in the week, uh, Faf alluded to the fact that um, a guy like Kwaha could also fill in on that number nine. Just uh, talk us about the options then. I'll probably also take my boots to the game as an option. But yeah, you know, we've always. Uh, 
we've always calculated the options that we have uh, at NAD, you know, and 7-1, we've got a guy like Kwaha, his servant's background, he's got a skill set to be able to execute whatever we require on the at wing, you know, if we need uh, uh, assistance from him. But once again, we've calculated every option that we had, and we know that this is the best possible chance for us to win the game against the All Blacks. And once again, I know a lot of people, when they look at 7-1, they always think about the risk. You know, even if you've got 5-3 split on the bench, the game of rugby is just a physical game, so there's always a risk for someone to get injured. You know, hopefully everything will go well tomorrow, And but once again, I think we are well prepared, and that's why we think 7-1 split is the best one for us to be able to give challenges to the All Blacks. Uh, Coach Tick, I know that he uh, downplayed, not downplayed the moment of being in the final, but just him involved being a finalist, often talked about how important it is for the, t for, for, for the team it itself and not him, the individual. But are you able to take us through just being in the World Cup final for Sia and for a person like you with the kind of backgrounds that are available in Eastern Cape uh, from a right perspective and being in a position like this, are you just able to walk us through that path of what it means to be in this particular platform, and not even once, but twice in succession? Yeah, can you so this moment is, is very, very special for everyone who's involved, you know, and, uh, and there's one thing that we, I don't want to make this personal about us and Sia or whoever is involved in our team, but just the occasion, you know, to be able to be playing the World Cup final, it's a very special one. And, uh, and for us, you, you've asked us about our background, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, this is what we live for, you know. I know this position where I am now currently, it's not only about me, it's about the people that are also dreaming to be in this position, you know, back in, in, uh, in our communities in South Africa. And we know it's tough, you know, we know it's tough, but one thing again is that we just wanna make sure that we do everything in our powers to make sure that we keep on uniting our country. You know, this position, we don't take it for granted. You know, it's a very, very special moment, you know. And for a guy like Sia, coming from Sweden, you know, uh, wow, uh, no doubt at all if you, in 20 years to come, there will probably be a lot of Sia policies, you know, because of Sia has shown the youngsters from Sweden that irrespective of your background, and if you look at his story, you know, it's a very, very, I know it's, it's like a fairy tale story when you tell about when you talk about Sia, but it surely does change people's life. You know, it shows the boys, irrespective of where you come from, the background or how tough it is, it is possible. You know, and that is something that we live for. We just want to make sure that, irrespective of your background, if you've got your head in the right place and you've got a goal, you have to make sure that you keep chasing it. So, very proud for what Sia has achieved. And uh, if you look at the two teams, All Blacks have won the World Cup three times. We've won the World Cup three times, you know. So this game is actually bigger than just a World Cup final, you know, because probably if you, whoever wins, they're probably going to have bragging rights for the next eight years, you know, because the best team in the world, you have won it four times. And then for us also, we just want to make sure that we keep on making our people at home proud because the vibe and the messages that we get at home, it's very special, can you? So, yeah, a very special moment for everyone who's involved. But are you going to take inspiration from the victory against the All Blacks in Twickenham before the Rugby World Cup, or it's another game? There's one thing I've learned, my friend, through history. You know, if you're going to live in the past, you know, sometimes you're going to have a long day at the office. You know, so we know a team like All Blacks, they've got a lot of special X Factor players. No one gave them a chance that they'll be where they are at the moment. And for us that are analyzing all the teams, you know. I think the All Blacks, they really gel at the right time. You know, and if you look at the injuries, they've got uh, players that are coming back from injuries. If you look at the guy like Ritalik and uh, uh, Leonard Brown there at the back, you know, and uh, uh, Jody Barrett at 12. So they've also probably got their best possible 23 players on the field, you know. So you can never underestimate them. They are a very, very special team. That's one thing for them that I know for sure. Uh, they are individuals, they don't hide behind the systems. They always express themselves according to their X factor, you know. So if you look at what they've selected, they've probably selected the best possible 23 players, you know, and it's gonna be a tough game. It's gonna be a tough game, and whoever is gonna win tomorrow will probably have to be in the game for proper 85 minutes, you know, cause it's gonna be a tough one, and hopefully the conditions will allow for a good rug, you know, and I think the supporters, they also deserve a game like this, you know, because of, probably one of the two best teams in the world, you know, between the two teams 
both of them have won the World Cup three times, so it doesn't get better than this. It's a very, very special occasion, but you can never underestimate the All Blacks. Um, Coach Dick, you, you, you mentioned the occasion of the All Black Test. I mean, 1995 in particular in townships changed the way the, the entire game was. If you are just able again walk us through the path of experiencing a Springbok All Black game, the emotions around it, and how it split communities in the Eastern Cape, especially for tomorrow where people are wearing the All Black jerseys and fervent for support of the All Blacks, and then you find some in Bok jerseys, that even for some, it splits families. Yeah, can you so? Uh, you know, when I think about that moment as 11 year old back then, you know, that 1995 game, it really changed the image of the game in South Africa. You know, every kid in the township wanted to be Joe Stransky. I actually, they used to call me Township Stransky, you know, and uh, every kid wanted to be Chester Williams. Every kid wanted to be James Small, you know. So whenever I look back in that game, and you know how we do it, Ekasi, we, we always go on the streets and sing, and that's how we celebrate, you know, sing a Makwicho, you know, and it, whenever I think about that moment, it always feels like it was yesterday. And, uh, and once again, the legacy, the guys like uh, Francois Pinar and Joel Stransky, those guys who were involved, the, the legacy they've left, you know, they've really made it possible for us to be where we are at the moment, you know, so we know how special it is to play against the All Blacks, you know, but once again, <laughs> these are the moments that we live for. These are the moments that we live for, and uh, it's going to be a special occasion. But I think I know before the tournament, no one thought maybe it will be the All Blacks and the Springboks, you know, more especially also losing the first game. The All Blacks, they lost the game. We lost against Ireland, and everyone thought, okay, Ireland will probably be a good chance to be in the final and France, you know. And those teams, they've on a good day, you know, they also could have been here where we are at the moment, but the way we fought the past two games, you could you could just see that it wasn't only about the game, you know, it was just bigger than the rugby game. So hopefully tomorrow we'll keep on fighting and hopefully we'll make our country proud and we know how tough it is back at home sometimes with all the challenges, but yeah, we'll just make sure that we give our people back at home some a bit of light.